SwiftUI has an advanced hit testing algorithm that uses both the frame of the view and also its content as needed. For example, if we had an on tap gesture for this text view here, the whole text view would become tappable, its whole frame. You couldn't by accident sort of tap the hole in the O and miss the text view and tap whatever was below. It wouldn't work like that. On the other hand, if you had a circle here instead, that only the circular part would become tappable. The sort of frame around it, the square around it would not be tappable. To try this out, we could say in our body, there's a Z stack with a rectangle inside. I'll fill this thing blue with a frame width of 300 and height of 300 and an on tap gesture where we'll do print rectangle tapped. But this is inside a Z stack. So I can go ahead and place something over it. In this case, a circle that will fill with red. Give it the same frame. So that's width 300, height 300. And delete the alignment. And on tap gesture, this time saying print circle tapped. If you go ahead and run this code back, you'll find that tapping inside the circle here will print circle tapped. But hitting the blue area here will print rectangle tapped. So even though the circle has the same 300 by 300 frame, its contents are being used for the tap. It understands this bit here is invisible, so tap down to the rectangle behind. So it's really clever. Now SwiftUI lets us control interactivity for users in two different ways. The first of which is allows hit testing, which when attached to a view with its parameter set to false, the view isn't even considered to be tappable. It's completely disabled. That does not mean it's inert. There's a difference. It, 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 it just won't catch any taps. So for example, we could say here that our circle is allows hit testing to be false, like that. And now with that in place, we can tap the circle and get rectangle tapped every time. The circle is refusing to respond to taps, even though it has an on tap gesture here, which is neat. The other useful way of controlling uh, the tap interactivity is another modifier called content shape, which lets us specify the tappable shape for a view. Now by default, the tappable shape for a circle is the circle, a circle of the same size, right? But you can specify a different shape if you want to. We could have said, let's move on to uh, hit testing false. Let's say our content shape here is a rectangle for the circle. And what happens now is that the circle's whole frame will be used as its tap area. So pressing on the red area will print circle tapped and pressing on the blue area will also print circle tapped because the whole space for this circle is now its content shape, which reflects in its tap area. Now where content shape becomes really useful is when you attach actions to stacks that have spaces. Because by default, SwiftUI thinks uh, that spaces aren't worth being tapped. It'll look through those to whoever's behind. So for example, we could say, let's delete some of this code. If we had a V stack here with text, hello, then a spacer with a frame height of 100, then text world, like that. If I have an on tap gesture here saying print V stack tapped, you'll find you can tap hello or you can tap world. So here, that works, and world, that works. But there's big space in the middle, I can tap there and nothing happens at all. I'm tapping all the time, nothing happens until I finally get near to world and bang, it starts triggering again. So, that might be what you want. But you can also override this. You can say, actually, I want to have a content shape rectangle for the VStack itself. The whole area of the VStack is its content shape, like this. And now the whole thing becomes tappable, including the spacer in the middle. So I can tap on hello, or world, or in the middle, and anywhere will work. Thanks to the content shape being a rectangle, so the whole area of the VStack, its whole frame, becomes its tappable area.